Shimai. Today we're going to have a look at ash dieback um, or calera, chalera. Uh, it goes by different names. Um, its Latin name is Hymenocyphus fraxineus um, and it's an absolutely devastating disease that's um, affecting ash trees. Now I'm very privileged to be once again joined by uh, Mr. Rob Penn, um, cyclist, baker, author of The Man Who Made Things Out of Trees and general all-round good guy. Uh, and we're going to be discussing ash dieback and how it's affecting the ash in this country. And I'm stood again at, at the ash actually from the other side from the previous video. And if you look here you can see what a beautiful, beautiful example this is of an ash tree. So ash is now affected by a disease called ash dieback and the disease actually came from Asia. It's a, a virus which co-evolved with different species of ash in Asia and does them no harm. But it arrived in Europe probably sometime in the 1990s and crossed over to Britain probably sometime in the early 2000s and it's now beginning to manifest itself in the landscape in Britain, everywhere in Britain unfortunately. And it over time kill, weakens and then lead, either kills or leads to the death of the tree. And there are somewhere in the region of 120 to 140 million ash trees in Britain and it now seems highly likely that we're going to lose at least 80% of those, possibly somewhere closer to 95%. Now you'll begin to see it once you realise what the signs of ash dieback are, I'm afraid you'll begin to see it kind of everywhere. And the best time to look for it is from July onwards when you would expect the crown of an ash tree to be full. And if you look up under an ash tree and you see that parts of the crown are missing, let's say 10 to 20% of the crown is missing, that, generally speaking, is ash dieback. And it means that the that tree is coming to an early end of its life. So ash dieback is going to change the landscape of Britain forever. As Rob said, you know, we're going to lose at least 80% of our trees. Um, it's a highly destructive disease. Um, it affects ash of all ages and we'll have a look at a minute at some of the signs on some of the younger ashes. And also, you can see this one in full leaf. It looks really, really healthy. Just a few, few yards down that way, a few metres down that way, there's one that's looking really, really sick. So it's spread by a fungus um, and it releases spores into the atmosphere that get blown uh, and can be blown for tens of miles. I mean, it can blow a tremendous distance. So it's going to be very, very difficult to do anything about this. We're not going to be able to stop the spread of it, OK? Um, and it's the fruiting bodies. There's like a fungus that will appear on the leaves. And that is now this kind of time, October time, so July to October. Um, and we'll have a look, like I say, down there. Okay, so I'm carrying on walking down here now and we're about perhaps 50 metres from that lovely example. We're now next to a gorgeous looking oak tree. Um, but if we come a little bit further along here, you'll see the stark difference between that one we just looked at and this one here. So you can see there how it's lost all its leaves already. It looks bare and just what a contrast it is between this one right next to it this is ash here, looking up into the canopy. This one here is also ash, clearly affected. I mean, to lose its leaves so much sooner than the rest. Um, and it looks bare. It looks really, really sick, this one does. Really sad. OK, now I've come perhaps another 50 metres along, and there's a little bit of rough ground here, and there's a, a little group of... Uh, self-seeded ash uh, and this is absolutely devastating to see. You can see here these are being affected at this very time and it's awful to see. I mean what you're looking for is that the leaves are starting to develop these dark patches on them and they'll wilt as you can see here until eventually 
they'll die and fall off. So ash trees are losing their leaves sooner than they really need to. Um, now the lesions appear where the branch meets the trunk in like a diamond shape. So if we have a look a little bit further down here, and you can see this one here, the discoloration between this part of the trunk and this branch has come off here. And now that discoloration there, and, and what can happen is you can end up with like a diamond shape that comes where the, the branch joins on. And I'll see if I can find an example of that. This is quite an interesting example here because we're looking for that brown staining. And this at the top here, you can see looks quite healthy. But if I track down here, looking down at the bark, and you can just start to see streaks coming down the bark there. And as I come a bit lower, just down by there, you can start to make out brown staining from that bud starting to track down there. Now that's a sign that this is already infected. And actually, if we look at this one, this leaf here, you can start to see the brown on the leaves and actually further across, it's already died, that leaf has. And if I come back up here, you can start to see it on the leaf there. So as healthy as that looks up here, I'm afraid for that young one there, it doesn't look very positive. So what we can actually see happening here is that the fungus affects the inside of the tree and the water transport within the tree. Um, and it blocks this water transport system, causing the tree to die. So basically it's being sort of starved to death of nutrients. Now, if like this one, this one is totally, totally dead down to a certain point, okay? Um, this, as you can see before, it's tracked down so far. Now, if the disease totally girdles it, it stops the transport right the way up. Now, this side is totally dead, as you can see. If it doesn't, then it's got a chance of surviving. But at the moment, um, it's really, really bleak. And this one looks like the ones around it, these younger ones around it looks really sick. Now, it, as we said, it doesn't affect trees of any particular age. It will affect any ash trees of any age. Now, these younger ones have succumbed quicker um, than perhaps the bigger ones. But um, unfortunately, once the trees are affected, it, it becomes noticeable within weeks, not, not months or years. It's just, boosh, it starts hitting it really hard. Like we said, that fungus grows inside the tree um, and the dead leaves here, the, the fungus will, will sort of um, fruit, little tiny white mushrooms will appear on the leaves and those spores get released and you can see how that would travel, particularly on a windy day, through and can travel this great distance and infect trees that currently aren't infected. Now, as when Dutch elm disease um, affected trees, there's a hope that ash, the, certain ash will have like a natural tolerance and natural, natural resistance. Now, as we looked at, ash produce keys in uh, the, the seeds, the little keys in, in the autumn, and they are really, really good at growing. Now, even if I look down at the ground here, I can see there's a young ash by there. There's young ash coming up, oh, not there, by there. Um, there's another one by there. So ash is great at growing. So, I mean, it really is a survivor, but it needs to develop a resistance or a natural resistance to this disease to stand any chance. I've continued to walk along hardly any distance. And I can see, if you can see up amongst there, the, the, the ones with the leaves on there is an oak tree, but those scraggy dead looking branches there, particularly that one there, more dead ash. And actually, once you start to spot, even through the gap there, if you look through the gap, see that one there? Just up through there, that one there. And actually, once you start to notice it, you start to realize what a massive, massive issue this is. It's actually said that it's going to, well, the predicted costs um, of managing the disease is going to be about 15 billion pound. And that's down to things like clearing the dead and dying trees to the loss of environmental services such as air purification. It is going to be a massive issue and it is just so very sad to see. Okay, we've walked on a bit further now. Um, and another sign to watch out for, as Rob said, the thinning of the crown. This one, you can see 
is starting to thin. Um, and what they'll do is, and it's not obvious on this one, is that they'll, they'll start to really try and survive. I mean, trees like, like us, they survive as they want to keep going. And they'll start to push out what they call epicormal growth. So that's extra growth, trying to survive, trying to put on that extra bit of growth. And then if all else seems to be failing, they will, as this tree, produce what they call a mast year of seeds. So one last push to reproduce, to get themselves growing elsewhere. So this tree has got loads and loads of seeds on. Loads of seeds, some of them have already come off. Now if I move up a little bit further, so I'll walk up past this one. Now this one's looking thin. You can see the difference and there's a, there's a stark contrast. If I go from this one, looking really thin, to this one, looking really healthy and thick, very, very few seeds on this one. No epicormal growth, not pushing to survive. This one, weirdly, right next door to that one, seems to be unaffected. Okay, ash dieback is everywhere. Rob's explained that, everywhere you go. Now, ash, uh, generally, because they're great at self-propagating, will grow along the sides of roads and things. One of the main roads that will take you, the A449, which uh, is local to us here, and it will run from the colder in Newport, um, really all the way past Usk, Raglan, Monmouth, um, and along the roads there, lots and lots of ash. And next time you're on that road, if you get a chance, just look at the sides and you will see these dead, sticky, bare ash trees. And you can start to realise the magnitude of what's happening here, how badly it's affecting our country. It is absolutely devastating. I mean, the sad thing is, is that this was avoidable. Seeing how easily ash grow here, um, there was no need for this to happen. At one point we were, in fact up to 2012, we were importing ash saplings and we imported this into our country. There was no need. We can grow ash trees. So it's a really sad state that we're in at the moment. This was unnecessary and now we have no way of combating it. We're just waiting for natural resistant trees. Now, if you think you've spotted ash dieback, there is um, a website, Tree Alert, that you can go on. And in fact, you can check your area. If you put in your postcode, it will um, show you what the prevalence of ash dieback is in your area. Um, but if you go on to Tree Alert, you can, you can report dead or dying trees that you've seen. Um, there are ways of combating it, biosecurity, I suppose, you know, so if you walk in a wood where you feel like you've, um, you know, encountered ash dieback, they say to clean your boots, clean your shoes, if you've got a buggy or a bike, wash them down. But it's very, very difficult when this is an airborne spore that's traveling, um, it's going to be very, very difficult to control. Uh, if you've got them in your garden, either bury them deep, compost them deep um, or burn them. It's, it's about the only way to deal with it, but currently uh, it's, it, it doesn't look great. So there we go. Um, my thanks to Rob again. I uh, really appreciate his input. You know, he's, he, he knows so much about ash trees and so much about um, woodlands and forestry. Um, but it's really sad. And when you start to recognise this, when you start to spot it, you'll suddenly realise what a massive problem this is for our country.